Hey guys, welcome back to Motivation and Box Trucking. I'm so excited to continue the state trucking series with you all. But before we get into it, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. And if you know anyone who's interested in trucking or is currently an owner operator, but is kind of stuck in the rut, be sure to share this video with them. So without further ado, let's get right into. What's moving Connecticut? Home to prestigious universities, including the Ivy League, Yale University, Connecticut is a historical all-American state. Connecticut is the United States' third smallest state, but as its name suggests, it is a major connection between New York, Massachusetts, and the Atlantic Ocean. With 15 operating ports, plus only being two to three hours away from both the Port of New York City and the Port of Boston, Connecticut offers a wide array of opportunities for truck drivers in the area. It is a bit less congested than its neighboring states, but if you plan on having a logistics company in the state, prepare to travel to and from New York and Massachusetts for many of the loads. Let's take a look at the agricultural commodities that are native to Connecticut. A commodity is a raw material or primary agricultural product that can be bought or sold such as copper or coffee. It is also a useful or valuable thing such as water or time. The top agricultural commodity were miscellaneous crops bringing in $272 million in 2022, followed by floriculture with $172 million. Floriculture contributes to about 25% of its total agricultural sales. Nursery and greenhouse products such as ornamental shrubs, hanging plants, and Christmas trees are on the list. Next, we have exports, which are commodities, articles, or services sold abroad out of the state. The top agricultural exports are plant products at $233 million, followed by livestock, dairy, and poultry products, as well as beef and veal. Whenever you see other products, such as livestock products, this refers to items that were made with the animal or plant parts that have not been consumed as food. Examples of this are lotions, hair products, glues, and clothing. The following items are commonly found moved by truck in Connecticut. Aircraft engines and parts, mid-sized automobiles, semiconductor machinery parts, and coal. In true motivation and box trucking fashion, Let's dive into the Amazon Relay opportunities in the Connecticut area. For Connecticut to be so small, there's actually a substantial amount of loads and quite a few facilities for box trucks to pull from. There's one sort center, BDL5, and three fulfillment distribution centers, BDL2 and BDL4, plus KBDL, which is an airport facility. BDL5 is in Wallingford, south of Hartford, and the other three facilities are located in Windsor, north of Hartford. There are many more facilities located along I-91 that may have additional loads for box trucks, but there are definitely opportunities for rigs, such as BDL-3, HFD-5, and DOB-7. There have been recent plans to construct a new distribution center in Waterbury. However, it has received some pushback from the residents. Amazon has big plans to build another big distribution center in our state, this time in the Naugatuck Valley. And leaders held a meeting this week to talk about the proposal. Neighbors and business owners have mixed reactions about this new facility. News A's Tim Harfman spoke with both sides and they're reacting. Ruth Barry turns 96 years old in two weeks. She spent 67 of them living on Long Meadow Drive in Waterbury and decades fighting for her so-called quiet community. They've tried to do a dog track, a shopping mall, a casino, and now an Amazon building. Amazon's looking to deliver a multi-story distribution center and parking garage on the Waterbury Nagatuck border. Barry says the warehouse would impact traffic, lighting, and the value of the residential area. We're all concerned about our houses. We're concerned about the noise. 
Leaders held a meeting last night to discuss the permit process and project. Blue Water Property Group is handling the development. More than 150 acres inside the valley's existing industrial park. Waterbury Mayor Paul Pernaruski says he understands the concerns, but leaders plan to comply with regulations like light barriers. Noise deadening uh, barriers will be put up as well to kind of cut down on the noise and those things. There will be some blasting to get this done. Um, and we'll work with the uh, with the Amazon to make sure that they've got a contractor who is competent in that. Pernaruski says the facility could create a thousand jobs and hundreds of millions of dollars in tax revenue while bringing tax breaks for residents. And I know people say it'll lower our taxes and everything. They give the positive. OK, but it's all right for them because they don't live here. John Petro owns Top of the Morning Restaurant across from the industrial park and believes the area struck gold. Waterbury is falling apart. We need something to bring new life back to Waterbury. We're told the hope is to begin construction next year and finish in 2027. Amazon declined to comment for this story. We also reached out to Blue Water Property Group for comment, but have not yet. Be sure to join the Patreon if you're interested in learning more about Amazon Relay in your area and coming up with strategy to successfully run Amazon. The links are in the description as well as pinned to the top of the comments. As I have mentioned in every state video, it is important for you to network and to join your state trucking association to find resources and events that can help support your logistics company. If you are interested in joining the industry, it is a great place to start to gather verifiable information and make connections to start and maintain a successful logistics company. By visiting the Motor Transport Association of Connecticut at mtac.us, you will gain access to some great online training courses that you can attend either as a member or non-member. The awesome thing about these courses is that you can have as many attendees as you would like and you only pay for the course once, not per attendee. That means you can schedule all of your business partners or employees to train at once without breaking the bank. Once again, I thank you for joining us for What's Moving, a state trucking series. Be sure to check out all 50 states. Until next time, stay safe and stay motivated.